Earlier today, my buddy Holly asked me a question about being able to query dynamic content from a custom post type inside a query loop, inside an accordion block. And while I hadn't done something like this before, I was very intrigued to see if it was possible. Thankfully, it's actually pretty easy, and there are a couple scenarios where this could really come in handy. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom post type for frequently asked questions, and then be able to display those inside of an accordion block dynamically based on some different parameters that we'll set up inside this video. This gives you and your clients the ability to have one place to manage all the frequently asked questions, and then you can query those throughout the site in any way you really need. A good example of this might be if you have a specific service, you'd only wanna show the FAQs having to do with that service. And the nice thing about keeping all of these in one place, like inside of a custom post type, is you only have one place you have to go back and edit them if things change or if you need to add more or delete some. So if that sounds like something that would be helpful for you, stick around and let's dive in and check it out. So we're gonna start this off by making it pretty basic and then we'll get into some more advanced things that would make this even more dynamic and useful. So here inside of my demo install, I've gone ahead and installed a couple things we'll need. The first one is advanced custom fields. I just downloaded this from the repository. It's the free version, as well as custom post type UI or CPT UI. You can just go to plugins, add new, and add those into your install. And besides the pro version to generate blocks, that's really all we're gonna need. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a custom post type for our FAQs. So here under CPT UI, I'm gonna do add new post type. For here, we'll just call it F FAQ. The plural will be FAQs and FAQ for the singular. Now we can just scroll down here to the very, very bottom. And here under the supports, I'm not going to use the editor or the featured image. And I'm going to come back and add a taxonomy later when we get into the more advanced thing. So all we need is this one checked. Everything else is default, should work just fine. Go ahead and add post type. And you can see here now we have a menu item for FAQs. So now we need to create a custom field for the answer to the FAQs. We're going to use the title of the post as the question. So what I'm going to do here is add new under custom fields. We'll call this FAQs. We're just going to need one field for now. It's going to be a text, and this is just going to be called answer. We'll scroll down here, and under location rules, we're going to change this to FAQ and hit save changes. So now we need to go ahead and create a couple of these FAQ posts so we have something to work with. So we'll go in here to FAQs and add new. We'll call this question one. And in the answer, I'll just go ahead and put some lorem ipsum in there for now. Go ahead and hit publish. We'll add another one. This will be question two. And just so we can see that it's not repeating the same thing, this is the answer for number two. Hit publish. And we'll do one more post here for question three. And again, I'll just do some lower Ipsum. Go ahead and hit publish. And now we can go see how we can set this up inside of a query loop to bring all of these in. So we're just gonna go to pages, add new, and I'm just gonna dump this on an FAQ page for now. I'll go ahead and add a container with a inner container. And we'll give this just a little bit of padding here just to give ourselves some breathing room. And I'm gonna make this just a little bit narrower. We can add a heading, so we'll say frequently asked questions. And I wanna put a little space beneath that. So we'll go here and change the margin to maybe 40 pixels. Now underneath that, we're gonna add a query loop block and we just wanna start blank. And so in here is gonna be our query. The first thing we wanna do is under the select post type, we wanna go ahead and change that to FAQs since we wanna query our FAQs. Now here under post per page, we can leave this at 10. Obviously, if you have tons of FAQs and you wanna bring in more, you can do that. Otherwise, for now, we just put three in, so showing 10 will be fine. Now, I'm gonna pop open the list view here so we can see inside of this query loop is a grid and then our post template. Inside that post template is where I'm gonna add the accordion. So I'll put our accordion here and you can see we have three coming in because we have three of those FAQ posts. Now what we want to do is connect some of this dynamic data. So here for the accordion title, I'm going to scroll down and enable dynamic data. And here for the accordion item, we're going to choose the title. So this is the title of the post, which is going to be our question. So we have question three, question two, and question one all coming in. Now for the accordion content, 
I need to swap this over to a generate blocks headline block. We'll change it to paragraph. And again, we'll go to the enable dynamic data. And this one we want to do post meta since we did a custom field for this. And we just called that answer. So we can go ahead and put that in there. Now we'll have some styling to do, but let's go check on the front end and make sure that it's all working. So here you can see question three, there's our lorem ipsum. Question two, here's the answer for number two and question one, and all these accordions are working. Now this isn't a perfect solution because it's actually bringing in multiple accordions, which might not be the best for performance, but honestly, these blocks are so light, I'm not gonna sweat that too much. But one thing I don't like is that they all appear open when I load the page and there's a gap between them. But that just comes from some of the defaults which we can override here. So here inside the accordion item, we'll get rid of that. We should be able to set this open item by default. We wanna turn that to no. We want these to be closed by default. And then one of these, I think it's the accordion content, has some bottom margin. That's where we're getting that gap in between them. So we can just change that to zero, hit update, hit refresh on the front end. And now you can see they're all nested close to each other and we're not dealing with them all being open when the page is first opened. Now I numbered these, most of your frequently asked questions aren't gonna be numbered, but we could change the order of these if we wanted to. Now this is a great way for clients to be able to come in and add new FAQs really easily. They come in here, they add new, they put in the question, they put in the answer, and boom, just like that, they're done. This way they're not having to go into the editor and actually make changes to the page. However, because we're tapping into this dynamic data, we can actually make this a whole lot nicer by introducing some taxonomies to this. That way we can query different types of FAQs depending on which page of the site the visitor is on. So if they're on a specific service, they only may care about the FAQs for that specific service and not care about the rest of them. We can do this through a custom taxonomy and then query those however we need to on the front end of the website. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna go back to CPTUI and we're gonna add a taxonomy this time. This time we're gonna call it FAQ category and we're gonna call this FAQ categories and FAQ category. This, we're gonna attach it to the post type of FAQ and we can go ahead and hit add taxonomy. So now under FAQs, you can see now we have our FAQ categories. We'll go ahead and go in there and create a couple. So this could be category one, maybe that's one of your services and we could do category two, maybe that's an additional service you offer. Now, if we go back in here to our FAQs, we can edit these and make sure to add those taxonomies. So we had category one, we'll add that to this one and update it. We'll go to question two and we'll say category two and add that and update it. And for question number one, let's actually add both of them, category one and category two. So this one should show up in both of the queries. Go ahead and update that. And we'll go back and create another page. We'll call this category one, since we're pretending this is one of the services we offer. Again, I'll just add a container. We're not really worried about the design here. We're worried more about the functionality. So I think actually to make this easy, what I'll do is just jump back in here, copy this query loop, and then we'll just paste it inside of here. So now we have everything we need already set up. However, we only wanna see the FAQs from category one. So we can do that by going over here to add parameter and we wanna look for taxonomies and this is gonna be FAQ categories and we want category one. So now if we publish this and take a look on the front end, we should see question three and question one, since both of those are under the taxonomy category one. Of course, if we were doing another page for category two, we would just go back to this query loop and change this taxonomy from category one to category two. You can also add multiple categories in here, multiple taxonomies. So if there was a place where you were gathering all your FAQs, you could have all of them in one place or mix and match them however you like. This just makes it really easy to go ahead and expand this system across your entire website and only show the information when it's relevant.
Not only is this a great option for FAQs like we did in this video, you can also do client testimonials this way and then show different testimonials dynamically based on the kind of feedback they're giving. So if you offer several different services, you could show the right kind of testimonial in the right place and again, have just one place to edit and update it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of the other Generate Press and Generate Blocks content I have available here on this channel. And if you're a fellow web developer, we'd love to have you inside of our community, the admin bar, which you can find down in the description below.